time to go forward, relative. backward. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted want? to, if we only have five minutes left, that's disappointing. I wanted to keep going. I had funny, I, I had two funny ideas. Hit it. <laughs> Hit it. Uh, Let's go. Pitch okay, it. so so one of the interesting things about being a guy like me who, you know, my bread and butter, really what I do well is writing. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I do say so myself, if I can say, uh, I can deliver what I said. But I'm also good at thinking, or at least I think I'm good, uh, of thinking of ideas for stuff. And occasionally, like every day, I think of something <laughs> that can't, I could never sell, and I couldn't do. But you can. I heard one the other day. I'm not going to say it, but I heard one after you left the other day. Oh, did they play it for well, you? Well, I because I was thinking Dan of came doing... in and told me about it. Oh, I and was we thinking... spent a good hour, all of us going. That would, that would. Oh my God, that's awesome. Just a concept that you in your own mind can't mold that you wanted that you can pawn off to somebody else. I think I'm going to do that here. Or that you can't I'm sell. I'm not going to. You. It's your idea to oh, say. Oh, let's hit it, man. I think. Well, I had two ideas. And uh, one of them is called, I'm going to do the, the less, the one people, I don't know if they'll think either of them are good, because I keep in mind I've only done one of these out loud, because uh, they've just been <laughs> bouncing around my head, and I'm so busy with my TV shows, and then I got these other scripts, and then I believe it or not, I'm directing another movie, but don't good. tell, oh, yeah. dosh! And, no, you're uh, a busy guy, we just want two ideas right now. Two, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, they're not really fully formed, but one of them is called Gifted, and it's for a, uh, a TV show. And it's a six-episode season, and it's about a guy from a Montessori school. Who do you like? Who do you like? Who's an actor you like? Uh, let's throw uh, for TV. Yeah. Or for for TV. Age. For film. Forties male. Uh, let, let, you know what? Let's take that. Let's Nathan take, uh, Fillion. It, it works. Nathan great. Fillion. If you is like great, him. Yeah. So Nathan Fillion works at a Montessori school. He's an alcoholic. He has a lot of interesting theories about how to deal with children. His like shithead brother, who's a worse version of him, lives with him. But Nathan Fillion's like an intellectual. He's gifted. He's unable to hold a relationship, and he has trouble talking to people his own age. Because even though he sounds like a smart guy and he seems like a smart guy, he's ultimately extremely immature. You know, he goes home every day, smokes weed, sits alone, plays video games. But then when you ask him he's this very eloquent like oh, I'm an intellectual guy but he can't make it with women he can't do anything it sounds so he, like a guy no <laughs> me <laughs> <laughs> no i was thinking about all of us <laughs> oh, that's all of our collective room. egos yeah so so he can't he can't really work at this montessori school and he ends up getting into a sort of like dumb debate like a a, a figurative you know that thing you know not all men mm -hmm. the idea mm -hmm. when people can't Empathize when people can't. Uh, 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 what's the word? Abstractly empathize. They can directly empathize, but they go. Women are saying men hit on them too much. Not me. Right. You know, people who like are that defensive. Right. He's sort of one of those, but not a not that. And he gets in this fight at this Montessori school. He gets fired. And he's like, his whole life centers around being a teacher at this school, and he uses it to flirt with women. He tries to find a teaching job, but teaching jobs are few and far between. So he gets one at this school on the edge of town, like like out in like the Bronx, and it's it's not an inner city school, but it's a normal lower middle class school, and he is a first grade teacher. And he decides, this is all in the pilot, he decides uh, that because he's used to uh, teaching gifted children, these children can be gifted too. All people have innate potential. And so why should I treat these children as anything but adults? If, I, if they are in here all day, every day, why don't I block up the day, I bring my brother in to teach part of it because I want to go smoke weed and I'll just leave <laughs> them in charge and there's no oversight at this school because there's no education budget. So I, I fuck it, I'm gonna treat these kids like adults. So it becomes, because children are being treated as adults, children these days have iPhones, they're being exposed to stories and ideas that you could never imagine. They're much smarter than they usually are. So then they have been in the past or at least much more well-read. They seem smarter even though ultimately they're children. And so what it becomes is there are three other kindergarten classes, but because he's talking to them like they're adults and refuses to acknowledge that they're children, this turns into House of Cards <laughs> in a kindergarten uh. with the kids slowly manipulating each other. And then the big arc of the first season is one of the kids, he notices Duncan, uh, is like sort of Manip gets better at it and ends up like getting him caught for smoking weed and manipulates him ends up blackmailing him yes. this is a kindergarten age kid and so and, and ends up like trapping him and then he kills his cat 
And the end of the first season is a confrontation. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, first season. Uh, so the whole first season, there's like a lot of plots that yeah. I'd have to think of and interweaving things with the kids. And like he starts dating one of their parents, and that's a totally immoral. But like Duncan uses that too. And Duncan's playing the other kids against him, like Game of Thrones. Wow, I, I, you need a real Gary Coleman for yeah, this. You need, you need you a real Gary Coleman. We'll get to that in a second. So, uh, so the end of the first season is Duncan deliberately gets himself held back because our teacher <laughs> tries to get him expelled at, and like to psychiatric care, but Duncan manipulates that into getting him held back for another year. And the final season is them sitting outside of the prince. The final scene is them sitting outside of the principal's office, and he goes, "You think you're pretty smart, don't you? You're a sociopath." <laughs> and the kid goes, "What that means?" And he goes, <laughs> "And he goes, you don't have compassion. You don't have empathy. You can't feel for other people." The kid goes, I feel for other people. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, like who? And he goes, you. I want you to hurt. <laughs> and, and he goes, and he looks at him, Nathan Fillion looks at him, he goes, does anything matter to you? And the kid goes, yeah. My mom. And he goes, really? And he goes, no. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> and for season. And so, like, okay, you could never do that show because you would need 12 great child actors. Yeah. Or, or you get Andy Circus to motion capture them. <laughs> the whole this, thing. this is like, it's like you, you managed to do Rise of the Planet of the Apes with little kids. With children. Instead yeah, that's of apes. Joke. That, is, that is That is something. That is Netflix, Amazon, Can Hulu. Can you not kill the cat? No, oh, I want to kill. That's like a. To. That's a. That's a. God. That's a eye pop moment. I'm a cat person, Sasha. You got to. Oh, you got to kill the cat. Okay, kill maybe cat. it's the class hamster. All right. Well, okay. I think okay. at the okay. beginning. Okay. I think okay. at the beginning. That's don't let her too. mold your play doh. Well, I think I'm the executive here. In this like crazy <laughs> twisted world. I'm with the cigar chomping right now. Mass media is collaboration. That's what the entertainment industry is. Don't let anyone believe otherwise. Well, so a I lot think, of people don't want a dead cat. And when you uh, wait, oh, we did a test screening. It's well, right. here's, here's one. <laughs> came here's, back. It came here's back one. No. Here's one. Here's one. Yeah. At the beginning of the first season, the class hamster has disappeared, and he's like, it probably just got loose. But then by episode, let's say it's a, it's an eight. It's a Netflix eight. By episode four, we realize that Duncan killed the hamster when he delivers the skull of the hamster to the teacher, <laughs> and he goes. I found him. Yeah. And then he leaves. Then, episode five. I want you to play Duncan. Episode five, his cat, the pet cat, disappears, but we don't see But we don't see know where it is. We don't know where it okay. is. Okay. Ah! I want to I I write a quick scene then. Okay, so when the kid walks in, and he, but, but he's got an apple in his hand, and he, like, he's going to bring it to the teacher, but instead he takes a bite out of the apple and he puts the hamster skull on the desk. Oh, Boom. Good. Jeremy good. spoke in class today. I love it. Jeremy <laughs> spoke. There you go. There you go. Um, I love that scene. It's in. <laughs> 